Welcome, this is Master Prophet Noel teaching you The Laws of Creation, Keys to Success, Volume 1 and 2 CD set. In this course, you will learn the hidden secrets to the wealth you desire lies in your ability to create. We will continue with today's teaching, The Laws of Creation, Keys to Success, Volume 1 and 2 CD set. We'll be right back with today's teaching. The Laws of Creation Keys to Success Number 1 Creation will free you from the rise of economic slavery. The mind of economic slavery is on the rise in America. Now millions of Americans are working in jobs for greedy business owners looking to enslave them. By giving them a low wage, no medical, dental or retirement benefits and forcing them to work long and hard hours. Economic slavery is on the rise in America. Now many historians say that slavery began in the 1600s with majority of slaves being black held captive by white slave owners who used them as laborers and used many brainwashing techniques to control the masses. For many years black slaves worked endless hours in plantations and cotton fields to increase the wealth of greedy white slave owners that used religion and mental manipulation to oppress the poor. Now history teaches us that in 1863, President Abraham Lincoln signed a law called Emancipation Proclamation, which freed the slaves held in Confederate states. This law became the spark that started the movement worldwide to free black slaves from their white slave owners. I believe that freeing the black slaves was more of a business decision to the greedy white slave owners than a spiritual one so many people believe. Let me explain. In the 1800s, many greedy white slave owners began to unite and speak of the difficulty cost of maintaining slaves. Each slave must be fed, clothed, and provided medical assistance to maintain a steady worker that could generate their own wealth. The cost of maintaining a slave was high and the dangers of runaways was even higher. In this meeting, these powerful white slave owners realized that the concept of slavery must be changed in order for the wealthy to be competitive to growing competition worldwide. The wealthy white slave owners agreed to free the slaves with a hidden agenda of enslaving them again without the high cost of feeding them, clothing them, and providing medical and dental assistance. They introduced a new form of slavery called economic slavery. Think about it. Every time you work at a job that does not want to provide you medical, dental, and retirement benefits or vacation time, forcing you to work hard hours for low pay, remember this teaching, economic slavery is on the rise in America. Now listen to this prophecy I gave to this caller that revealed the creation of a book that he would bring forth and the result of that prophecy. Listen closely to this prophecy. What the word of the prophet will say, Jesse, is that God is going to start moving you to make powerful decisions. This is going to be a year of decisions where it's going to be between you and God. And it's going to, I want you to make a decision because God is going to start to plant some things in your heart that you need to follow up with that maybe not everyone in your family is going to understand. They're not going to really appreciate, but you need to follow the unction of God that has in your heart. Um, some of the things that God is telling me that uh, is going to deal with you, Jesse, is that I want you to contemplate that for 2010, you and your wife visiting the homeless shelters. And God wants you to, to contemplate visiting the homeless shelter, giving some sandwiches, giving some foods, because this would be a great way uh, for for uh, for you to continue with your, um, your your movement with ministry and also give you opportunities to meet people when uh, as you start your ministry. So I want you to contemplate because the opportunities are going to start to appear in your life where you can give some food and you just go to your local shelter, give some food, tell them about God and things like that. Also, I want you to also keep in mind, you're going to make an important decision about uh, um, what you're going to do for 2010. Now, let me just tell you some things that you're contemplating that God is going to start to put in your heart. Be very careful um, because you're going to make a decision that has to do with moving to a closer ministry. 
earn. It's going to be something that you're going to be contemplating because there's a ministry there you got your eyes on. Do you understand what the prophet is saying? And it's going to be something that you, you, you're you going to contemplate because you want to enjoy that ministry. You want to um, be a part of that ministry. But what I want you to keep in mind, there's nothing with, wrong with you enjoying the ministry and being blessed. But I want you to keep in mind, Jesse, that um, you have to start your own ministry because you have to be very careful that a lot of ministers, they'll try to put you under their ministry and they'll siphon your growth. They'll siphon what God has called you to do. So have you and your wife been talking about maybe moving and getting closer to a, a recognized ministry that um, that you guys got your eyes on? Yes, we've been contemplating moving, um, and we were saying, you know, we were going to uh, fellowship, you know, but we talked about that too. We were fellowship with other churches, but I remember what you said a while back when we talked about, you know, not uh, being too caught up. Yes. Yeah, because what happens, Jesse, this is what happens. When ministers see your giftedness, when they see your potential, what they'll do is they'll bring you into their ministry and they'll siphon your growth. They'll, they'll, they'll stagnate the gifts and your abilities. And I've seen this happen to many, many people. That's why I try to tell people that you can enjoy other people's ministries, but you have to grow, you have to um, start your own. Because I got a guy, let me, let me give you an example. I got a guy named Danny that started with me when I first started my ministry. And I prophesied to him that he needed to get out of this certain church. He, he didn't want to listen to me. He said, no, prophet, they're going to make me a minister. They're going to put me, they're going to ordain me. And I kept telling him that that's not their intentions. Their intention is just to keep you to sit down and you to come pay tithes. And let me tell you, several years later, um, Jesse, I just saw him the other day and he's still stuck in the same place. And the first thing I asked him was, um, um, are you in ministry yet? Do you have your ordination? Do you? And he tells me, Prophet, he's still at the same place. You know, and we don't want that for you. We want you to take over the, the world, you and your wife, and we want you guys to make some decisions. Now, God is going to start to put in your... God is going to start to put in your heart, Jesse, one year, one year. God, you're going to start to see that you're going to, God, God is going to make a commitment to you that he's asking one year from you, Jesse, one year. And in this year of 2010, you have to give him this one year so that you can see the movement of God in your life. Because what God is going to do, Jesse, he's going to start to move you to do other things. You know, I know you have plans for 2010. Um, you know, you were thinking about law school. But God keeps saying one year. Give him one year. Because in this one year, Jesse, he's going to move you in so many directions. And it's going to show you It's going to show you that your dependency is not in money or physical uh, 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 Opportunities, if your dependency is going to be on God, He's going to move you in this one year, 2010. You're going to go with your wife. You're going forward. You're going to um, you're going to continue to work, and then God is going to start to cause new events that are going to start to appear in your life, and it's all going to be in the promise of one year. And Jesse, I want you to also keep in mind. I want you to continue to look for your angels. You know. Your angels are going to, you know, as I was praying for you, your angels keep dealing with me that you need to continue to connect. You need to continue to connect because you're desiring them and they're desiring you and you need to continue to learn. You need to continue to grow because you're going to you're going to operate your ministry and you're going to be like uh, like a, a crossing over, like a vampire. And you want to continue to connect with your angels and be sensitive so that when you're standing in front of people, you can um, operate in that gift. Do you have any questions for the prophet? Yes. Yes. <laughs> 